Mr. Martin's onto the tea drone side of the universe, which we're going to talk about tonight, and a couple of other things in the in the pipeline. So we are underway and making everything look better than we hoped it would as time goes on. And I have to tell you that I am amazed at how well things are going and how quickly they're actually coming to fruition. But we haven't got our hubs yet, which is a pain, to say the least. But, hey, I know they're being delivered because a bunch of people in Europe that joined about the same time I did have started to receive their tablets, and that is very cool. So we'll expect more of them to be shipped out here in this direction as soon as they are available. So it's a Monday, and here's our mate, the little pig. And just in case you needed a reminder, it is Monday, and this is what we do with our coffee Monday mornings. I know it's past Monday morning now, but however, what you can do in the evenings of Monday, you can replace the coffee with red wine and you do the same thing. And that supposedly makes it all work. So let's get in amongst this. And as you can see, we've got our little GIF files going there. And I haven't got done one for the drone yet, but man, that is a very, very cool product. We're going to talk about that tonight. And boy, I remember having the conversation with Odalie in Dubai about how are you going to stop people buying this or countries buying this as a military project. And they were trying to prevent that from happening, but I see they've surrendered <laughs> and they, I believe, have some fairly major orders coming in from various and sundry places. But if you've been following the uh, videos from Ukraine where the Russians keep getting grenades dropped on them from little quiet drones, this drone is not going to do that, I can tell you. It is loud. You can hear it coming from a couple of kilometres away. Those four turbines, they're not fake turbines, they are gas turbines. Anyway, we'll get amongst that. Here we are, 6th of February, and you're right, Martin, medicinal benefits involved in the red wine and the coffee. And I'm doing some experiments at the moment to uh, dilute the Gumby Gumby capsules with red wine because I reckon that'll be a good outcome, or maybe not. <laughs> but anyway, we'll work on that. We are trying, I'm actually trying some Gumby Gumby leaves or capsules and uh, DMSO on my wounds from overseas. And I've got to tell you, I have taken one painkiller today, which from a week ago, I was taking eight or more a day. That's astounding. And I did not believe it actually would happen, but wow, I'm very happy. So here we are, folks. Everyone goes forward together. That's our tagline. We mean it. We are attempting to set up structures so that everyone comes along with us and nobody gets left behind because that is the most important thing to me. Everybody that's been with us deserves to get the benefit of the outcome. And we have, we have some outcomes that are approaching us at a rate of knots. Not as quick as I'd like, but they're going to be bigger than I had hoped. So let's just keep on going down this road and see what happens when we're focused. Remember, we're expressing our view as affiliates only. We do not represent the companies. We do not represent any of them. And we don't give financial advice. That's pretty straightforward. So just be aware that we hope that you manage to learn from what we're talking about and that you get to a point where there are options for you 
at your point of entry, at your perspective, where you want it to be. I see the Irwin clan has arrived. Who else is just here? And Bob and Irene, did I just see that? Or did it fall out? There they are, Robert and Irene, yep. The butlers, they are here as well. So I know that Mr. Butler himself, he's got a fairly black and white view of the world. So it's really interesting to talk to people one-on-one -on -one and just understand where people's heads are at. So it's been very cool. Okay, tonight we are going to talk about two-pan drones, and that's their logo, and their tagline is further and faster. And when I saw all this information come through just a few days ago, I was amazed because when I was at the trade show in Dubai, they didn't have the big one there. They had the one down. So it would carry 400 kilos, but the big one takes 600 kilos. That's a fair bit of payload. And what I've since learned is that they have the capability for remote pilots to step in and take over the flight of the device. But they can, in fact, go to a GPS point, land, unload, launch, and come back on their own. They have a number of very key and very interesting concepts built into them. But think about what industry is this going to affect? It is completely disruptive. Um, for example, my, my brother Phil has a delivery van that he works for. Uh, I think it's yellow trucks or something now. And he delivers medical equipment, medical devices, plasma, organs, all that sort of stuff. So they give him a call. I need this box to be at that hospital ASAP. He rockets in there, picks it up, and off he drives. And recently, actually during the COVID pandemic, he was tasked to deliver some stuff to Inverell. Now, if you can think about how long that would take someone from Brisbane to get in a vehicle, drive to Inverell, drop off a box, turn around and come back again. This thing will do it in 20 minutes. It is amazing what they've got in their roadmap, and they're going to disrupt a whole lot of industries. And you'll see those shapes that are on the top of the drone there, the little one, two, three, four, six-sided shapes. We'll talk about that in a minute. So this is, in fact, a completely disruptive technology because it changes the way we think about delivery of products and not necessarily cups of coffee, but products such as parts, medical supplies, all that sort of stuff. So it's going to change how all of that happens. Cargo delivery to your door, job site, jungle, or desert, it can do it. And when I saw the original miniature, the, the toy, I was fascinated with that, thinking that's going to be a huge market. All these guys that got drones, who's not going to want one of these? I didn't know when I first saw that model that they had one that was 10 metres across. And what can it carry? It is huge. Everywhere from two and a half kilos up to 600 kilos. So the big one, 600 kilos. The next one down, 280, 140, two and a half. That's the toy. But it's a toy with four gas turbines on it. It's, it's just phenomenal. When I saw it, I thought, I've got to have one of these. I've got to work out how I'm going to fool myself into thinking I can afford to buy a toy with four gas turbines strapped on the side of it. <laughs> but the, I tell you what, there's no sneaking up on somebody. If you, 
if you thought you'd buy one of these drones and be able to hover over someone's backyard and take pictures and annoy people, mate, they'll hear you coming three kilometres away. These things are loud. <laughs> they are not going to deliver cups of coffee in the suburbs, I can tell you that. They are out there. And they look good when you pick them up and move them around. They've got all of the key components of what you would see high-tech aircraft using. And if you look at the way they're shaped, they have what's called a lift body. So, yes, they're travelling at a fair rate of knots with their, with their thin wings, which gives them good lift, but they have a lift body. And when they come into land or they take off, they've got electric booster fans in the body to assist with getting off the ground or landing. And as I said, when they come in to land and they're somewhere where they need to drop some stuff off, they can be taken over by a remote pilot. Amazing thought process of how they've put all that together. And when I talked to Odali about the plan, he just said we needed one. So we sat down and worked out how to build it. So when you think about what is actually put together, it's astounding. And, wow, they've done a bit of marketing literature now that you can download. I've got a copy of the PDF. Uh, it's, it's just basically all the simple things that you can think of. If you get a medical emergency, technically they can fly this uh, drone in and land it on a, a, a gas well or an oil platform like that, pick up someone who's very ill and whip them back to the hospital. They don't need two pilots flying around in a helicopter. It's just go there. I'm amazed at the simplicity of what they've done. And, of course, it all makes logical sense when you think about it. We've had remote control drones now for ages. This one's just faster and bigger. And now you can actually fly it to an exact point on the globe, land it, drop off a payload, and whip back again. And inside the body is where the payload goes. So it's not trailing something. Uh, if you've been in the south side of Brisbane and noticed the little drones there that fly around, they're They've got a string underneath them. They pick up two cups of coffee and deliver it. But these things don't do that. The payload is inside the body. So it's aerodynamic. They originally had this process that they wanted to solve, and that was how do they deliver product, parts, medical supplies, et cetera, to teams working in the Amazon. And the way they had it set up at the time was with a helicopter, which is stupidly expensive to run per hour. These things can arrive quicker than a helicopter, deliver the product and be back at the base before the helicopters got there and landed and for a fraction of the cost per hour. I'm just fascinated by the night. You know, I'm going to have to have one. I think I might have to uh, do some sort of a deal with Mr. Butler because he won't know how to fly it because it's a bit high tech. I think he should buy one and then give it to me. Just thinking. Anyway, see if that gets a reaction. The other thing they've put together is firefighting. And we look at that in Australia as a big industry we've only really started attacking fires with aircraft in the last, say, 20 years. But they've been doing it overseas a lot for a lot longer. And you see the little blue bubbles that are dropping out of that drone there. They've been testing in America now for quite some time, uh, basically an anti-fire grenade. So they throw this stuff into the fire it goes bang and puts a fire out. And it's not an explosion as per se, but it's a pretty big bang and it distributes, I think it's a powder, 
the non-burning powder that puts fire out. So they're already testing that in certain places. And if you look at the numbers, they're talking about a million units by 2050 fighting fires in Europe and the United States. A million units. It's going to make our tokens worth a mozza. I have to say, an absolute mozza. And can't just can't get my head around the size of some of these markets. But of course, when you're not involved in them, working out how big they are is very difficult. It's not until you meet somebody like this who gives you the numbers and it's like, whoa, how do you think you'll have a million of these units operating by 2050? I mean, that's 27 years away. That's no time at all. It's just a massive market. And, and this drone is going to impact lots and lots of these industries. Here's a little video, but you'll see that they've already sold this to some people. Now, JetX is a company that does private aircraft flights, contract flights, all that sort of stuff. They contract to deliver parts to oil rigs all over the place. Uh, JetX were the company that sponsored the air show I was at in Dubai. And they very kindly sent an attractive young lady driving a roller to come down and pick me up and take me up to the JetX terminal so I could have a whiskey in the air conditioning. I tell you, it was pretty flash. But they are quite a large organisation over there. They have their own terminal at the airport, and you can arrange for them to pick up freight, deliver freight to all sorts of places. They take care of it. They have already stepped in and become part of this drone project because they can see the advantages in delivering parts and supplies to remote locations, how fast it is, how cheap it is to operate. So it's a great door opener, a way that people can see this actually operating. And yep, it is an amazing outcome. And that's actually, that's the 1000, uh, the one that was in the video is the one that they had at the trade show. The 1,000 is bigger. It carries uh, quite a bit more weight. But, man, those are four gas turbines and they kick up some dust when they fire up, let me tell you. So these are potential drone customers, or the obvious ones, Amazon, FedEx, et cetera, et cetera, delivery companies. They're just purpose built for them. I've, I've always been fascinated by the fact that people like UPS and FedEx guarantee delivery in America overnight to any address in the country. And they literally will drive a vehicle there and drop off a parcel. I am astounded that that's profitable enough to make that work. So all these other companies, all the oil companies, big farmers, you know, armed forces all over the place. Uh, you can imagine if you know anything about the Australian military, you think about uh, situations like Long, Long Tan in Vietnam, where they were trying to deliver ammunition to troops under fire and they had to fly in helicopters and tip it out of a door. And let me tell you something, those helicopters are made out of Coke tins. If you think you can fly around in a helicopter at low altitude and have people shoot at you and you're okay, you're not. 
modern choppers, the Super Kings, the all sorts of things, they have armoured pods in them so you can protect the crew, which makes sense. But in, in the days when I was in the Army, we didn't have helicopters with that much spare power. So every ounce of armour plate you put in was an ounce of cargo you couldn't carry. So it was amazing to see that. I can see all sorts of jobs in the military for these types of drones because they're set up to go. They just point them at something and let them go, and off they go. So you can set up so the receiving squad can take over control, land it, drop the cargo and off, or you can do it from a remote place and do it by remote control. These bad boys are going to have some uses. So where are they going to make them? Well, Brazil, coincidentally, has a very long history of leading edge aircraft manufacture. And like this one, Embraer. Embraer manufacture all sorts of cutting edge aircraft. That's just a computer generated image of four new types of aircraft that Embraer are experimenting with. They do electric, they do hydrogen, they do all sorts of things. So they are actually at the cutting edge and they've done really well. They've built some military aircraft. Uh, in fact, the US military bought uh, ground attack aircraft from Embraer back when they were in Afghanistan. And they're still there, of course. So there's quite a bit of high-tech manufacturing capacity in Brazil. Very good stuff. Now, have a look at this. This is quite weird. I found this today. They call it a vertiport, vertical takeoff, vertical landing, designed for electric aircraft. Now, I just find this fascinating that already in countries like Brazil, they are thinking about vertical takeoff and landing commuter places. And here we are with a drone, purpose built. Go down to the vertiport with your suitcase full of spare parts, hurl it in this drone and send it off. Pretty hard to argue that that's going to be a big market, isn't it? T-drones, anyone? I, I just think... It's a massive project that we've got our teeth into, and I'm really excited by everything to do with 2PAN. They've just thought through all the little wrinkles, and I'm very happy with it. So, okay, let's look at silver. Now, Cassie has managed to corner some silver kangaroos. They are one ounce, 999.9 silver. And they should be based on what we bought these coins for a few months ago. These should be about 65 bucks each, but they're not. So if you're interested in buying some of these, there's a limited number of them. I'm not sure exactly how many, but there is a limited number of them. Uh, call Cassie and say, Derek said, you may be able to buy these for five bucks. And then after she's cut my throat, you might be able to negotiate a real price. But they are considerably cheaper than 65 bucks. But, man, silver, I looked through a lot of American websites today and they were three weeks delivery on silver coins and no guarantee of the price. So that's just, if you have an interest in it, give Cassie a call, 0400 232 456, and uh, she can arrange for you to buy some of those. We've got a few on hand. Now, a few changes in the Zanique website. So they're coming out with a process that will let the minting of the Zanique coins go directly into the app rather than in the website and have you move it. So the process itself, the actual minting, will remain completely unaffected. But the coins that are minted 
will directly transfer into the Nomo app if you've got it linked to your back office. So during the implementation phase, the payouts will only be made after the feature has been activated, which of course makes sense. And you will notice that it's not live yet because I tried today. However, it's not live yet because all you people with iPhones are holding us up. I'm just saying, you should go and get a real, a real app on your phone. As these coins uh, are minted from your license, you can move them immediately onto an exchange and sell them, or you can save them. You can do whatever you like with them. There's past 24 hours, there is no limit on what you can do with them. So you don't have to hold these things for six months. You don't have to hold them for a year. There's no limit on it. It takes about 24 hours from them to cycle from the minting and into your wallet. After that point, you can do whatever you like with them. So uh, I just think this is a this is a great idea because it gets it immediately onto your phone where you can decide to sell them, save them, do whatever you like. It's your issue then. Nobody else has got control of it. You're the only one that has access to that blockchain wallet. There's no interference from the company. So I see, Mr. Martin, that you would be one of the people with an iPhone. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> okay. There is also a delay or has been on some people's back office, a delay in synchronizing the number of coins that you are minting with the total you see on your dashboard. Now, it's only that there is a problem in the synchronization. It's not a real, it's not a real issue. So if you've got a full master node, so a full hub, you can go into the back office, go to Zanique, Zanique Hubs, look at the coins. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And it will show you exactly when the last coins were minted and what the total should be. So you go into your Sophia back office, click on Zanique, and there you'll see Zanique Hubs. Now, when you click on that, what you're actually doing is you're opening up a blockchain address because you'll have open there a report that says this is over on the right. You see how many coins that's minted. It's got a housing address. Now, that's a blockchain address. address. So as I click on that, it will open up the blockchain explorer, the block explorer. Now, you'll see down... At the bottom there, that minted 1.57, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, coins on that day. And it gives you the date and time of that posting. Now, if you notice on your dashboard that your Zenit coins have not been going up, sometimes they'll go three or four days and not change, and then they go up a lot. But I had someone... Uh, give me a yell the other day and say, mine haven't changed for two weeks, and this was the problem. So we went in and looked at the Block Explorer, and yes, it was working. It just wasn't synchronizing. So they are working on that, and we'll see how we go with how fast that happens. Tupan, I'm so pleased and proud to be part of this outfit. Um, we're working with Odalie about some token cooperations and using a two-pan type carbon sequestering platform for here in Australia. I'm very, very excited to be talking to him about that. So remember, Zanique, they're the blockchain, the engine room. Sophia, they're the people system. Then you've got two-pan, Avanoc, Two pan drones, the city real estate, and the movie. 
and hours are coming, the security of metal. What I love about this company is we're not talking about creating yet another cryptocurrency that is of arguable value. All of these projects are real businesses. The tokens are linked to a real business that has a real value. The two pan tokens are one token is basically a cubic meter of, of forest in the Amazon basin. And I've, I've got a bunch of them. I've got thousand thousand tokens or something at the moment in my dashboard. And I'm very proud of that. I've always wanted to do things like that. But guess what? There's more to come. Here's our blockchain stats. And this is just a transaction count. And basically all this tells you is that it's working as described. The transaction count is going up as more people get involved, more tokens are minted, more coins are minted, more coins are used. These transactions will start to go up exponentially in the near future. And that's when we want to take our best outcome. But it's still working as described. I took that today, so that's 158,000 transactions in total. I love it. As we're growing, we're seeing more and more of the tech we've become, and we're becoming just mainstream, so mainstream it's scary because nobody thought it would go like this, really. Who knew? Apparently we knew. And boy, am I glad that we got there. So why is it important? Because tokenizing assets is a completely different platform than creating a cryptocurrency. Completely different. Because each one of these tokens is linked to a real physical asset. When we get our gold and silver tokens on the market, those tokens will be linked exactly to the price of gold and silver. And that's what we're about. So our thoughts and prayers, well wishes get everybody in the Ukraine. That is a horrendous situation over there. Can't imagine what it's like trying to live there, trying to look after your family and survive day to day. How is our world going? Well, what a list we've got tonight. This is a, about a 15-minute video, and the links will be in the, in the YouTube video where this dude calls the British housing market being a Ponzi scheme. And they're talking about how it's crashing as we speak, et cetera. And when you look at the numbers, it's, yep, yeah, he's probably got a good point. Uh, this is from one of the silver dudes and they're struggling to get silver eagles in America. They believe there's a absolute shortage, and there should be because we're showing a 5,000 ton deficit this year. 5,000 tons. Get your head around that. 5,000 tons of silver in the hole this year because demand is outstripping supply. Here's our friend Florian Heiser from Brisbane who's talking about the state of our economy and that companies like finder.com.au, they have cut 15% of their staff. He also has done a report on can you handle a 7.48% rate on your mortgage, which I think is probably not too far away when you look at all the ways that these governments are heading. This guy is, this is from Stansbury Research. He's talking about the fact that crypto isn't dead. It's just gearing up to go mainstream, and I believe him. But I think there'll be a massive clearing out of cryptocurrencies that have no value. I think we'll start to see lots of things change in the long run so that people get value for their money. And... 
E.B. Tucker, the real reason banks are desperate to hoard gold. He is on the money. Uh, he's the guy that talks about, did the video some time back where people um, were exchanging wads of cash for um, – sorry, well, I'm, just, I'm seeing a logo there. I don't know why that's come up like that. People were displaying wads of cash for gold and what it is today. It's amazing. What's going to happen next? We don't know. I'd love to know. Then I, obviously I'd be a lot smarter than everybody else. So what now? We're in the right place to benefit from this. It's completely free to add a wallet. Token minting starts at 100 euros and up. Stay focused on the package. Gold, silver, and our blockchain. We're a group of like-minded people that just are here to make sure we get through. And yeah, I can't see why that's that Duber is back again. Got no idea. Okay. We're focused on economic survival because the world is changing and we need to pay attention. It is completely um, bent out of shape, for want of a better term. We don't know what's going to happen from day to day. But what I can tell you is the bottom line is that everything we knew as normal has gone. It is gone. And it's gone fishing. We don't know what the outcome of this is. Lots of countries are talking about devaluing their currency, etc. I just don't. There it is. Found it. Okay. Um, there's lots of things happening in the world, and we are only able to control some of it. The best thing we can do is make sure we're on the right track. Everything we've ever talked about is coming true and it is not changing. Has anyone got any questions on what we talked about tonight? I'll be very happy to answer questions. No questions coming up in the chat? I must have done too good a job. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, thanks, Martin and, and Malcolm. You answered questions on the hubs and T-drones. Thanks, Martin. Um, thanks for coming. I enjoy it when people get in the chat window and have a comment every now and then. And despite the fact that you've got an iPhone, I think you're a nice guy. As soon as I know when the iPhone thing has gone live, we'll stick a... Uh, message in the Telegram channel that it can't be far away because it's been a week and a half, I think, since they got approval to upload it and uploaded it. Uh, but when we did our app some time ago, it came down to um, Samsung, Google got it approved and up on the Play Store in about two days and Apple took two weeks, I think. They have a lot more controls, et cetera, that they like to check out. So thanks, everybody, for coming. You see Keith Balls with us tonight. Who else is here? Terry, Mr. Terry, Ms. Sawyer, Annette, good to see you here. We have an amazing opportunity at our feet, and I just hope you take advantage of it as and how you choose to. There's no requirement for it to be huge. You can do it in bite-sized bits. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. I look forward to seeing you on the golden beaches of the world. Have a great night.